Farina. Let's have a look at Sydney Olympic now, uh, starting with their lineup. There it is there. Who are the key players? Well, I think obviously Pablo Cardoza, who, who hasn't scored in five games, I think. But uh, I don't think you can hold a good striker down for too long. He scored a lot of goals this year, and I think he'll be a key today. As well, I think Chris Colantis will be a danger man for Olympic. And Carlton, they come into this particular game with a couple of youngsters. And they've also got a couple of injured players as well. And Tricarico is one of them. Sean Douglas has got a problem with the knee as well. The youngsters are Steve Martin and Stojewski. And let's see how they do in this next 90 minutes. Well, for all the Carlton fans, don't give up hope. Sydney Olympic have already won two in succession. They've not won three all season. There's always hope. And we go to your match commentator, Mike Cockrell. Thank you very much, Paul Wade. The heavens have absolutely opened up here at Belmore Sports Ground. Just a minute or so ago, the rain started tumbling down. The spectators running for cover. There's not that much cover behind each goal, but they're filling up the grandstands in front of our commentary position. It is absolutely lashing down, as you can see. The rain has stayed away for the last few hours, but right on cue as Mark Shield, the referee from Brisbane in Queensland, prepares to get this match underway. The rain has come tumbling down. It's going to be Sydney Olympic to start proceedings, playing in their familiar all blue against Carlton in their away strip of all white. A very important game this for the home side. Their home record indeed here at Belmore this season is outstanding. Just one loss so far during the 98-99 season for Olympic at Belmore Oval. But there's a feeling that maybe, just maybe, Carlton, despite all their problems, can steal a result here. Certainly Frank Farina and his Marconi players hoping they can do just that. This table is extremely congested on the edge of the top six. Going into this match, Marconi, Adelaide City and Sydney Olympic all locked together on 39 points. Goal difference could prove crucial. Carlton, of course, as I've already said, five games without a win. A lot of youngsters, in fact, five teenagers out there tonight as they look to break forward immediately. And it's Moreira in space. Bohutz has had to get back in a hurry. And eventually Sydney Olympic rescued by the numbers coming back in defence. But a good movement there from Carlton early. And a sign, perhaps, Paul Wade, that with the pressure off, they are intending to make life very difficult for Sydney Olympic indeed. Yeah, quite right. And Sydney Olympic obviously feeling the pressure. There's nothing worse than playing at home when you've got to get a result. If you're allowed to play a little bit and there's no pressure on you, it's a different story. Well, let's see if they are real championship contenders in the next 90 minutes. Difficult conditions for the players, as you can see. Pitch, though, in good condition, although it's rather moist underneath the surface. Is nice and flat. Carlton, as we've already said, five teenagers in their starting lineup tonight, or should I say, in their squad. So a big job for the few experienced players out there for the Carlton side. Anastasiadis, Marth, Moreira among them. Sean Douglas as well. Early free kick taken by Marth. He pushes it wide to the left. And there is a handball against Steve Martin, one of those youngsters. Ball just coming off this surface very quickly indeed. So Tomei up front tonight with Cardozo. Kalantis on the left for Sydney Olympic. Scotty Thomas on the right. And on this left side of the park is Hussein Jamar, who impressed Branko Chalina after coming off the bench last week in Perth, where Sydney Olympic managed a two-all draw, but were very unlucky by all accounts not to grab all three points. Anthopoulos comes forward. Well intercepted there by Durakovic. There'll be a few nerves out there as Olympic try to settle this game early. Jamar turning one way and then the other. He skipped past Douglas. The ball into the middle is cleared eventually by the defence as the goalkeeper Anastasiadis was all at sea there. Steve Martin, I think it was, coming across from that left side. And he's done the right thing there, the youngster. Anastasiadis, you'd feel sure Frank Farina will be the busier of the two goalkeepers tonight. Uh, definitely. I think Carlton will have to try and hold off for the first 20 minutes. If they can do that, they'll be right in this game, Mike. Uh, it's always difficult when a team's on a losing streak, but uh, hopefully they can hold out for these first 20 minutes. In the Olympic have the firepower, as we already know. Pablo Cardozo, top goal scorer in the Ericsson Cup with 17 goals, but none in his last five. 
although according to Branco Cellina, Pablo Cardozo has hit the woodwork no less than six times in those five matches. So that suggests his form is not that bad. He's just not getting the rub of the green. A few minutes into this match, the rain's still teeming down. Both coaches grabbing the umbrellas. Martin playing on the left for Carlton, the youngster. Just his second appearance in the Ericsson Cup. Thompson up front for Carlton alongside Moreira. Here comes Juric, the sweeper for Sydney Olympic. Bailey. Into the channel, no. Tomo, I should say, couldn't keep it under control. And away comes... Krakarico for Carlton back in the side tonight. A welcome sight for Eddie Krenchevich to have a player as talented as Krakarico back in the frame after being injured for the last few weeks. Throw to Carlton. Marth with the throw in for Carlton. Moreira, the Brazilian. Putting Sydney Olympic under pressure. Bailey has to clear only as far as Anthopoulos. He nods it into the centre. Thompson was there. Away by Juric. Martin once again tries to get it in the middle. Too much space here for Archie Thompson. Finally, they're closing him down, Sydney Olympic. And some good pressure being applied here by Carlton early on. Yeah, it's very good pressure. I'll tell you what, Sydney Olympic are only leaving Norm Tome up front. It just shows you that... Maybe Branko Kalina is being a little bit cautious. We talked before the game about five at the back. And playing at home, sometimes you think that maybe they should chase a result a little bit more adventurous than that. Maybe uh, the pressure is getting to Branko Kalina. I mean, he thrives on that sort of pressure. He's been in this situation before. But it means a hell of a lot to these Sydney Olympic supporters to get in that top six. Savitsky with the free kick for Carlton. Foul committed by Jamar. He drives it into the middle of Savinsky. It's come off Kalantis. That will be a corner, the first of the game to Carlton. So some more work to do for George Bahutsos in that Sydney Olympic goal. Bahutsos celebrating his 30th birthday yesterday. And the best way for a goalkeeper to celebrate, of course, is to keep a clean sheet. These conditions are not ideally suited for the goalkeeper. Martin with the in-swinging corner for Carlton. There's been a slip and a good header and the Blues take the lead. Well, we suggested that was possibly going to happen and David Savinsky, the centre-half with a great header really, has put the home team under all sorts of pressure now. Good delivery from the corner. Where was the marking? But that was a fabulous, fabulous header from David Savinsky. And the early pressure applied by Carlton pays off. It certainly does. He has been picked up by Milan Blagojevic, who I don't think could really do too much more to get uh, a challenge in there. Speaking to David Savinsky before the game, he said, my job basically tonight is to keep that back four as solid as possible because there have been so many changes. He didn't even think about going forward. And he's so deadly in the air. How valuable uh, a set piece is Frank Farina? Gold dust, I suppose. Oh, set pieces can win your games and can win your championships, Wadey, as you well know. And uh, it reminded me a bit of yourself in your, in your, <laughs> in your glory days there, Paul. Yeah, memory doesn't go back that far. <laughs> Frank Farina can hardly keep the smile off his face. Of course, Marconi hoping both Sydney Olympic and Adelaide City lose today. That will suit the Stallions down to the ground. And that's exactly what Branko Cellina didn't want three teams, both Adelaide City, I should say, Marconi and Olympic, all feeling the pressure of that very tight race for the top six. As Thomas goes through on his man there. Steve Martin once again getting involved early, this youngster. Coming in from that left side. Shuddering tackle from Scotty Thomas. I think there's going to be a fair bit of pressure on Mark Shields tonight. He's really got to be the referee that keeps his head because... Conditions like this, I think you've got to use the 17th rule of football, don't you, Frank Farina? Common sense. There's going to be some ordinary tackles, but it's purely because of the conditions. Yeah, definitely. I think people will be sliding in here, and uh, when, when it is wet, it, it gets a little bit dangerous and out of hand, but hopefully Mark's experienced enough to, to be able to handle it, and I, I don't think he's, he's going to make any bad decisions tonight. Moreira. 
awarded the free kick there, but Carlton have wasted it. So early on, at least, Pablo Cardozo playing in midfield for Sydney Olympic. Kalantis is joining Toma in the attack. And that's one of the reasons, of course, Cardozo has found the goals harder to come by in recent weeks, spending a lot of time in midfield. And the league's top goal scorer. An unselfish role for him. But an interesting debate, I guess, Paul Wade. You've taken your top goal scorer out of the front line to strengthen your midfield. I suppose some people might argue you lose too much in that type of switch. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Sydney Olympic before and we've seen the, the penetrative runs that they can make. But uh, they were in dry conditions. I just wonder whether that might change Branko Kalina's outlook on this particular game. They had so many... Jason Kalina was going through the midfield. Pablo Cardozo a couple of times played in the midfield early and went uh, on them screaming runs. But now to leave Norm Tome up front on his own, that's a big ask in conditions like this. Martin once again given a lot of room by Sydney Olympic. This youngster with a nice left foot. Good cross in. Juric away for Olympic. Helped on by Tsikinis. Marth bars away for Carlton. Still the visitors try to come forward. Thomas for Olympic. That pass had too much on it for Tsikinis. Douglas cleans up for Carlton. Nido in turn has given it away. Psychologically Sydney Olympic looking for a swift response to conceding that early goal. Carlton, of course, with just pride to play for, they'll be in a very relaxed frame of mind, these Carlton players, given no chance, really, by a lot of the critics for this particular match. But they still have some talent out there. Kalantis nudging Savinsky off the ball. The decision doesn't meet with too much approval from the crowd, but Mark Shield is firm. Chris Galantis has had his problems with referees this season. Some of it, I would suggest, for arguing with exactly those type of decisions. And uh, on that occasion, Chris Galantis, uh, I guess, zipping up the lips there. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he's learnt his lesson. I think the last time our cameras were here, he was sent off for an elbow behind play. Maybe a little bit undisciplined at time, but certainly a genius that uh, can't be counted out of any game, I don't think. Ten minutes gone, Carlton, one goal to nil over Sydney Olympic Chris Kalantis pushing forward to partner Norman Tome in this Olympic attack and there are a few of the fans here at Belmore on a very difficult evening for both players and spectators the rain that bucketed down around the time of the kickoff has disappeared for the moment but Still a wet night here in Sydney. Easter Sunday. Pitch though holding up well. Blagojevic turns away from his man. Cardozo looking to work the one-two with Tomo, but the layoff wasn't the best. Mark comes forward for Carlton. Tricarico has done well to get inside Jamar. Down goes Marth, no decision from the referee. There was a foul from Jamar, which this time the referee has spotted. And that was a tackle from behind on Tricarico. And the right decision made by Mark Shield. So Carlton getting the flow of free kicks as well. That's a sign that perhaps the Olympic are getting a little bit frustrated with the way they've started this match. A must-win game for the home team. Well, they all are really at this stage of the season. Just three games to go until the finals. Thomas, nice turn and good pass too. Has opened up the space for Cardozo. The overlap provided by Jamar. Blagojevic in space. The cross might fall for Thomas. It does. Down he goes. The referee has a good look at that one. And Mark Shield deciding against any intervention there. Still Olympic have the ball. It might break now for Kalantis. Kalantis faced by plenty of white shirts. One of them was Alex Moreira, who comes away with the football now. Moreira 
trying to take Bailey on down the line. Oh, there's plenty of willing tackles going in out there. Bailey's long ball almost picking out Tomei. Savinsky cleaning up for Carlton. Frank, as a coach, how quickly have you changed your mind about tactics that you've worked on all week? I mean, surely Branko Kalina with Pablo Cardozo in the middle needs a bit of penetration from the midfield. I just wonder whether Pablo Cardozo has got that sort of uh, play in him. You can't help but uh, feel a little bit sorry for Branko in Olympic in losing most probably the two most mobile players in uh, Jason Kalina and, and Brett Emerton. But, uh, yeah, I, I tend to think uh, Cardozo is not going to be as dangerous playing in that role than if you put him right up front where he scored all his goals. Galantis into the area, but the tackle was well-timed from Douglas. Sean Douglas, the Kiwi international, knew that he had to get his timing right there. Galantis possibly looking for a penalty. Carlton now under a little bit of pressure. Sydney Olympic with their first corner. Cardozo will deliver it into the middle. Juric is at the near post, goes deep instead, over the top of the goalkeeper. A chance here for Bailey, an air swing from him. Thomas now, but the cover was eventually there from Savinsky, and Carlton had the numbers. This time, Kalantis gets the decision. Nudged off the ball by Stojewski, according to the referee, but Scotty Bailey there. Denied in the first instance with the header. And in the second instance, it's not being able to connect with the football. In comes the free kick from Thomas. Bailey again creating problems. This time the ball goes wide. Scotty Bailey, who has played plenty of his football as a striker, particularly in the New South Wales Super League. Knows where the goal is. Very versatile player, Scott Bailey. Probably one of the... Well, underrated players in this Sydney Olympic squad. Very much so. Very strong. We talk about Andrew Marth being good in the air. Well, Scott Bailey's just as big and just as strong. Caused a lot of problems. That was a, a great save by Dean Anastasiadis. Threw him. So I don't think he had any support. There's the free kick given away by Scott Bailey. Having a bit of a talking to now from the referee. But Dean Anastasiadis just threw himself, not really knowing where it was going to go. And I don't think he had too much cover behind him either. So he had to make the save. Anthopoulos with the free kick for Carlton. Marth is there. Morera as well. Savinsky has gone forward and won the ball. He's proving a handful in the air for Sydney Olympic. The break is on. Blagojevic. Jomar. And a good tackle there from Anthopoulos. Francis what he was looking for there but Carlton kept their eye on the ball Morera with the knockdown here's Stojewski Cardozo so Pablo Cardozo starting the game in midfield for Sydney Olympic Certainly will suit the Carlton defenders. Morera down that line, comes inside and outside again. Good skills by Morera. Kalantis, a real crowd favourite here at Belmore. Chris Kalantis, nice switch as well. He's picked out Scott Thomas. Getting his angles all wrong there, looking for Cardozo. Carlton can clear. Durakovic. He'll be looking to inspire his team a little bit here, Durakovic. And that's a good ball as well. Just taken off the toe of Tomei by the Carlton defence. David De La Rocca. Time, mate. A real goal poacher. Olympic have another corner. This time it'll be the outswinger from Jamar. In fact, uh, they might play it short here at Olympic because Cardozo's gone across to take the corner. 
is a rehearsed move. In it comes now from Cardozo, who's attacking the ball. They've done it. And it's Chris Galantis who puts Sydney Olympic back on level terms. Similar situation to the opening goal from Carlton. The corner came in. Galantis with a nice clean header. The variation working a treat here for Sydney Olympic. The run wasn't picked up, it still needed a good finish from Galantis. And delight for both the Olympic players and the crowd here at Belmore Oval. Well, two of the more experienced Carlton players let themselves down then. Andrew Martha in the middle of your screen there, and Sean Douglas, two players who didn't really commit themselves to a challenge. And they left Dean Anastasiadis exposed, he really didn't have much of a chance, and they paid the price. Well, that's two very, very good headers we've seen now from these corners. One at either end, of course. Galantis full of running, full of confidence now, as you would expect. Advantage played by the referee Thompson, bringing down his man. Bailey behind play. The shot comes from Cardozo. That's out of the ground from Pablo Cardozo. Still some problems for Bailey, who was caught by Archie Thompson. And... Pablo Cardozo here, just the way the ball set up, that's what created the problems. Bailey should be okay, he's a tough customer. So both goals coming from corners, but I'd suggest uh, Frank Farina, both headers were, were excellent headers for Savinsky in the first case and Kalantis with the header for Sydney Olympic. Not a lot you can really do about those, Mike. Uh, when when set, places are, uh, set pieces are played and played well, it's very difficult to defend against. You can pick the bones ahead of it and try and make a, you know, try and find out what you've done wrong. But at the end of the day, we've seen two clinically finished uh, set pieces. So my uh, initial call of being a, a little bit too harsh on Andrew Martin, and uh, Sean Douglas there, Frank? No, I think, you, I think you're pretty right, uh, Wade. It's, you know, the set piece was well worked, but as I've said to, to players um, that I've played with or, or coached, that you've got to be tight. You've got to make sure you are tight. And I think they both were in that situation, as you said, uh, a little bit lax in their marking. So one apiece here at Belmore. That's brought the home crowd to life. Olympic showing good character to recover from that early setback. Kalantis leading the way. Cardozo. Tomei on that right side. Chips it forward again, intending to return the favour. Anastasiadis off his line quickly for Carlton. They can't get out of their own hit. half here, the visitors. Jamar trying to take on one too many. One all after 20 minutes. That is the story. And a crucial game for Sydney Olympic. <laughs> to Kenis. Blagojevic. These are the sort of players that Branko Cellino will be looking for to take control here. The likes of Tukenis, Blagojevic, Durakovic, all with plenty of experience at this level. Good interception there from Savinsky. A very good interception indeed. Moreira, strong player, quick player as well, the Brazilian, but that's a well-timed challenge from Blagojevic. Thompson. Jamar watching Thompson all the way. Can't get past the second one. Again, it was Blagojevic with a strong challenge. Here's Anthopoulos now with space on this right side for Carlton. Jakarico just couldn't get the ball under control. Tricarico. Well, Carlton, as we've said on a number of occasions, lacking a lot of regular players tonight. But when you've got an attacking trio of Moreira, Tricarico and Thompson, you're not doing too badly. <laughs> it's not bad at all, is it? <laughs> Douglas. Carlton forced back into their own half. Miscued pass there from Savinsky. Juric is on the ball for Olympic. To Kenis. Nice layoff from Kalantis. Good ball as well from Juric. He's picked out Scott Thomas. 
Early ball from Thomas. Not the best delivery from Thomas, and he knows it. One of the huge improvers in the Ericsson Cup, Scott Thomas. Really was in and out of that Newcastle Breakers side a couple of years ago. His hometown club moved to Adelaide City last season where he established himself to the surprise of many. But this is the season when he has really come on and leaps and bounds, Scotty Thomas. Full of running, underrated, I would suggest, on the ball as well. Does have some good close skills. And he keeps running from the first minute to the last. Yeah, there are a uh, number of them that keep running. I noticed that Carlton have dropped Thompson back into the midfield now. So they're obviously deciding that maybe a little bit of caution on their part might be a good thing rather than go out there and try and really break this game open too early. Let's get Thompson, let's consolidate that midfield. Let's leave Moriera up there with Tricarico. Let's uh, see if we can win that midfield battle and see if we can pinch one on the break, maybe. Pumped forward in the direction of Norman Tomei. Funnily enough, they actually used that ploy last week by dropping Archie Thompson back into against us. Uh, whether or not that's a role that Eddie wants him to play, but he seems to be doing it on a re regular basis. But there again, I don't know whether whether he's more dangerous there or pushing further up. It's quite common these days, Frank, for teams to play with sort of a rotation of three players in attack. Uh, Thompson going into the front line, then dropping into midfield. Tricarico doing it likewise. You've even pushed Brad Maloney up for Carl, for Marconi, I should say, on occasions. That's right. We've, uh, I mean, looking at Archie Thompson here, he, he doesn't play the role too bad uh, with Marth just sitting in there behind. Uh, it would be interesting to see as the game goes on uh, how tri uh, Tricarico is going to go in terms of uh, his fitness and that. But uh, I know that Archie Thompson, I'd much rather see him as a coach getting the ball in the middle of the park there than I would, you know, 18 yards out, out, out of my goal because I'll tell you what, he's very quick and... Uh, he can do do a lot of danger to you, to you if he gets the ball in that area. Thomas has run down that ball on that right side. He comes inside Martin Kalantis. Kalantis. And in the end, Chris Kalantis just put off by the Carlton play coming at him. So Kalantis, the goal scorer for Sydney Olympic this evening. Dean Anastasiadis, who's been in and out of this Carlton side under some pressure from young Adrian Kagalsh. Anastasiadis also having a spell on trial in England. Now back in the side. Eddie Krenchevich, citing his experience, will prove valuable over the last three or four rounds of the season with Carlton missing so many regular players. Shoulder to shoulder there between Trikarico and Durakovic. Tricky player, Tricarico, living up to his name. He's got into the box as well. Good cutback. Here comes the shot. And just wide there by Andrew Marth. Lovely work from Tricarico to create the problems. Look how much work he had to do here. He had to use his strength and his balance and good awareness as well. He got the call from big Andrew Marth. Nice build up that from Carlton. Very good indeed. And it didn't miss by much. Tricarico put his hands on his head. As if to say that wasn't far away at all. It's going to be a close contest, this. You can see already that there's battles developing all over the ground. Both teams can play good football at times. And the conditions are making it a more even contest. So Tricarico, who's been out with injury for a few weeks for Carlton. He very impressive contributor to Carlton's season, Tricarico, who was only recruited late on by Eddie Krenchevich. After leaving the Gippsland Falcons. Surely a handball there by Kalantis. He's got to pass the keeper, and it's past the post as well. 
And a couple of the Carlton players having a word there. That will be interesting to see in the replay. Was this a use of the arms by Chris Galantis I there think as the so. ball bounce? Indeed. There it is there. Right hand up in the air. Very fortunate indeed that Carlton got away with that in a way. Because Mark Shields really had no idea. He was a good 25 yards behind the play when it occurred. And uh, I don't think the rain is driving down, so I'm not quite sure why he didn't see it. Moreira can't get past a good sliding tackle from Juric. That will be a Carlton throw. Well, Chris Galantis almost deceiving the referee there and almost putting Olympic in front with his second of the game. Long throw from Carlton. Away by Bailey. Thomas drives it down the line looking for Tomei. Good cover though from Della Rocca. Carlton have it back. Sloppy layoff that from Tricarico. One of his few mistakes in the match so far. Jomar. That should be a Carlton throw. It is. Archie Thompson doing a bit of defensive work on Cardozo. Just feel in these conditions as well, Mike, I think both coaches will be encouraging their players to have a have a dig from distance, especially with the likes of Marth in your side, who we've all seen what he can do from 25, 30 metres out. And we, these wet conditions, anything can happen. Certainly the ball coming off the surface very quickly indeed. Olympic have themselves a free kick. It will be taken by Jomar. Bailey has gone forward. Urich as well. Half an hour gone. It's all tied up at one apiece. And it comes from Jomar. Urich is jumping, but so too was Andrew Marth. He got there first. Away comes Marrera for Carlton. Plenty of room in front of him. Still going as Marrera. Stojewski tried to play it past Jamar, but Jamar held his ground. Cardozo. Carlton giving a good account of themselves here in the circumstances. Juric. Flag is up against Kalantis. Galantis involved in everything for Sydney Olympic. A very, very experienced player. He's been out with suspension for parts of this season. But he certainly is appreciated by his coach, Branko Cellina. Has the pedigree of a decade in Greece with the two biggest clubs, Olympiakos and Panathinaikos. Has been there, done that, Chris Kalantis. But I dare say there's no club he loves more passionately than Sydney Olympic. And he would dearly love to be part of a championship winning team this season. Olympic having won only one championship in their history. And Kalantis wasn't around when it happened. He's gone past Savitsky. Trouble here for the Carlton defender. No, the referee says it was a dive. And Thopolis down the line. Let's have a look at that again. Was there contact here? Well, I think, Frank, that's a situation that we were talking about. Common sense used by Mark Shields, where the conditions really played the part. I know Savinsky was late. He didn't make contact with the ball, but I think Kalansis fell rather than being touched. Well, well, I'd like to have a look at it. I haven't actually quite seen it, but I felt he, he... Did he get a touch of the ball there? I'm not quite sure. I felt it was very well done by Mark Shields because... Uh, yeah, like you say, those conditions, when you're sliding in there, it made it look worse than what it really was. I think Savinsky, in fact, did get the ball, so it was, I would suggest, a very brave decision from the referee and a good one as well. My problem was I just could never tackle like that, Wadey, you know that. <laughs> you don't bring those sorts of things up. You're a legend and we want people who don't know you to think that. <laughs> <laughs> Shove there on Jamar. 
fairly blatantly by Anthopoulos. Anthopoulos all over the back of Hussein Jamar. Well, the Olympic fans already getting on the back of the referee. That's no surprise. Mark Shield is not going to be intimidated. Marth in midfield for Carlton. Away comes Tricarico. And Tricarico catching Blagojevic on the way through, I feel. Blagojevic holding his head offside by a mile against Morera. And Milan Blagojevic took a knock there as Tricarico attempted to hurdle him. Seems to be okay though, Blagojevic. Colantis, well, you get the feeling, Frank Farina, that Colantis is going to get nothing out of Mark Shield tonight. No, and I, and I, I don't believe that there's been any really bad fouls on him, to be honest, Mike. Uh, you know, he's, he's appealing for everything, and you can't, you can't blame him for that, but I think Mark Shields is doing very well. The last few that uh, supposed fouls on him, I don't believe there have been fouls. Yeah, I think the more he puts the referee under pressure, the less he's going to get. Exactly right. But he has got a goal so far, Chris Colantis. Ten minutes left in this first half. And it was his goal which put Sydney Olympic back on level terms after Savinsky put Carlton in front after just six minutes of the game. Franco Cellino, I'm sure, won't be too dissatisfied with this situation. He'd feel that with Carlton's inexperience, perhaps, his team should finish the stronger of the two. Well, of course, that remains to be seen. But Sydney Olympic do have a very strong squad out there tonight. And their depth is probably evident in the players that are missing as well in the youth league. Played before this match, we saw the likes of Orgerinos, Savinsky, Leo Carl, Carlos Gonzalez and Jimmy Curtis all involved. And of course, Olympic also without Jason Chalina and Brett Emerton, who in just a few hours will be on duty for the young Socceroos in Ibadan, Nigeria. The opening game for Australia in those World Youth Championships against Saudi Arabia. Kalantis attempting to chip the goalkeeper there. Yes, I guess Olympic strength, not just about who's on the team sheet, but who's not Paul White. Yeah, I think when you look down some of the lists, the team lists now, how many players some teams have used, you're up in the high 20s. Gone are the days when I think you can win a championship with 16 players with injuries, suspensions, national team duty. If you've got a very good side, you really do need 20, 25 players to get through a season and to win it. And it's teams like South Melbourne, teams like Sydney Olympic that are the ones that, in the end, are going to come through. It comes across Marrera, and Alex Marrera puts Carlton back in front. Again, Savinsky was involved, this time as the architect. And the goalkeeper, George Pahutsos, did his level best to keep this one out. The cross came in, Marrera not picked up by Bailey. Too much on the header for Bohutsos and Carlton strike back. Stojewski it was with the cross and Marrera slack marking, that's all you can say. Carlton back in front. Very much so. I mean, we blamed the Carlton defence for slack marking at that corner. I think we've got to blame the Sydney Olympic defence for the same thing. Ba Bailey and Juric caught, napping. It looked a harmless situation, but that's just when opposition strike. And you've got a moment to relax and to think that you've got it all covered. And well done, Stoichevsky. Did very well to get between two players and get a decent cross in. Another lesson learnt, hopefully, by Olympic. But they find themselves one behind again and they've got all the work to do. So Olympic having to come from behind once again. As there's a clash behind play involving Milan Blagojevic. And Blagojevic there getting the card. He's complaining to the referee that there was an arm used against him. Let's have a look at this again. Well, it was Marth involved, I think, for Carlton. And there it is, just catching the incident there. It's surely a use of the arm by Blagojevic, but he was upset by something that happened a few seconds earlier. Yeah, he's a frustrating character, uh, Andrew Marth, to Mark, because he's such a big boy across the shoulders, and when he sticks those elbows out to protect himself, whether it be balance or a 50-50 challenge, 
And Blagojevic and Martha having a couple of words just before we got the pictures of Martha there. He's a very difficult character to mark, and sometimes innocently he'll stick one in the, uh, the end of your jaw, and that's what Blagojevic thought. A very rare display of frustration there from Milan Blagojevic. And Andrew Marth won't be too worried about that. He's got his opponent into the book. That certainly didn't um, upset the halo over Andrew Marth's head, that's for sure. <laughs> Stabber Mark has been renowned as the Ericsson's Cups, Ericsson Cups chief enforcer for a decade or so now. I remember one one fine Sunday morning in Brisbane, Mike waking up and having to go for X-rays on my jaw after uh, I had a nice impromptu meeting with his elbow. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think Andrew Mark though gets as good as he gives. He's uncomplaining most of the time likes to play it hard Andrew Marth and uh, that's certainly what a lot of coaches appreciate about him as well I think that's the thing isn't it when he's on your side he's such a great player to be with but uh, when you wake up on a Sunday morning and Sunday night you've got to uh, mark him for 90 minutes it's a pretty daunting task yeah I think he's a player that every coach would love to have in their side yeah Olympic a test of character now for them. Colantis looking for Jamar and Thopolis away for Carlton. And Thomas there tugging the shirt of Stojewski. And Olympic really just a little bit annoyed with themselves as much as anything I would suggest. It's not going according to plan, is it? No, they're a little bit frustrated. They've done so well to get themselves back in this competition. They're on the edge of the top six. They know that if they keep winning, they're going to stay there. And when Carlton, who aren't even in the contest, keep sticking goals in the back of the net through a lack of a little bit of lack of discipline, then the frustration is felt by all 11 players. For a challenge on Thompson, as you can see. Just on five minutes left in this first half, Carlton proving more than just nuisance value here at Belmore. <clears throat> Carlton may be outside the top six and with little hope of making the finals, but with 43 goals to their name before this match, clearly scoring is not a problem for this Carlton side. It's conceding that has been the issue. Douglas and that looked to have gone over the line did it in fact that's exactly what the assistant saw the whole of the ball I feel went over the line Sean Douglas will probably be more embarrassed about that than anything let's have a look at this again the whole of the ball over the line I would think so Mike I agree with you on that one there it Corn did go out corner's been taken and it comes from Kalantis to Kenneth is there but so too was Savinsky and that's going to be another corner to Sydney Olympic so some pressure being applied by the home team in the later stages of this first half. From just this sort of situation, they got themselves back on level terms. Carlton wanting to mark up a little bit better this time. Anastasiadis with the fist away. Kalantis jumps well. Hasn't been cleared to Kenis. Down he goes. The referee sees nothing in it. He took too long there, Peter, to Kenis. And the chance was lost. Tomei, Cardozo, Cardozo with the volley over the top from Pablo Cardozo. So Carlton surviving, some pressure there. Some acrobatics initially from Tomei and Cardozo with not a lot of backlift. Had a few problems keeping the ball down, but we would suggest that Cardozo will start pushing himself forward more often the longer this game goes on
Bailey drives it across the park. Thomas was the target, but Steve Martin held his ground well enough. The youngster, Steve Martin. Strong challenge that from Douglas. And Anthopoulos just up the park. Only Tricarico is there, but he's quick. Tricarico. And there's a flag up for a handball against Urich, who was then cleaned up in the follow-through by Tricarico. And here's some trouble for Urich. He goes into the book, but Tricarico, well, he had something to do with that as well. Mark Shield has seen the retaliation from Ante Urich. The decision was for that handball. It was the correct one. Let's see what happened here. Tricarico followed through. No, I think he, his tackle was late, but if we keep it rolling, I think he's going to get up and punch him right in the back of the head. There it is. That's what he got booked for in the end. So a few frayed nerves now. Carlton have the free kick. What Sydney Olympic don't want to do here is concede a third. Martin, the left-footed player, over the ball for Carlton. Three in the wall for Sydney Olympic. Martin goes for the shot, gets a deflection. So a corner to Carlton. They can continue to apply some pressure. The Blues really showing their metal here. Against all odds, really. With so many players missing from their side. Martin with the corner. In it comes. Andrew Marth, who was almost on the end of things, Stojewski on this right side, tries to get it back into the middle. Ace Stojewski. A long throw from Martin. A header away by Urich. It's going to be an action replay. Marth is the target on the edge of that six-yard box. He's got the knock on this time. Sydney Olympic had the numbers. And Steve Martin has been very impressive in this first half. Carlton have themselves yet another corner. The ball coming off the studs of Hussein Jamar. We're into stoppages. A minute added on by Mark Shield. George Pahutsos beaten twice already. Both goals coming from headers. So he'll be looking for a little bit more protection from his defence now. Martin brings the corner in. Cardozo up over the halfway line. No one home for Sydney Olympic. Douglas lofts it over the middle, trying to beat the offside trap. But Marrera and probably Savinsky as well, a little bit too slow to come back from an offside position. The rain starting to come down once again. Durakovic goes forward, gets the return. He's now out of position. Alex Moreira, the goal scorer for Carlton this evening. The Brazilian who once played with Ronaldo in the junior team at Cruzeiro. Tonight's goal. Was his 12th of the season. That's not a bad return by anyone's standards. Marrera proving to be a very useful addition to this Carlton squad. And Sydney Olympic once again giving away the free kicks. Franco Chilina, I'm sure, will feel as frustrated as his players with this predicament. Martin. Once again over the ball for Carlton. Good ball into the middle looking for Marth. Thompson was there. Storjewski with a shot from the edge. Jamar. I've got it back, Carlton. Thompson. Storjewski. Goes over the top. The header away by Bailey. Now Sydney Olympic can bring it under control. Not many options though in front of Cardozo. It may though break for Thomas. Still going, Scott Thomas. Good work from him. Strong play. Tomate almost finds it down that right side. But Carlton 
Getting the numbers back quickly. They look to be very fit, this Carlton side. Plenty of stamina shown by these youngsters. Cardozo, will he get the bounce of the ball? Very cool play by Andrew Mark. Very cool indeed. And there is the half-time whistle, in fact, from Mark Shield. So, Carlton, without a host of regular players, proving to be very resilient indeed. The home team with a big job in front of them in this second half. Carlton took the lead early through David Savinsky. Alex Moreira added a second seven minutes before half-time. Chris Galance is for Olympic with the goal in between those two. But so far... It's Carlton with the psychological advantage here at Belmore Oval. The halftime score is Carlton 2, Sydney Olympic 1. Two goals to one. Mark Shield about to resume proceedings after checking with his assistants. And I dare say Sydney Olympic coach Branko Cellina. Trying to inject some sort of urgency into his players during that half-time break. It's all so tight on the edge of the top six and Sydney Olympic can ill afford to drop points here against Carlton. So Carlton, of course, with nothing to play for in a very relaxed frame of mind. And that's been demonstrated by the way they have played in this match. Two goals in the first half, one to Savinsky, one to Marrera has set things up nicely for an unexpected Carlton victory. No change made by either coach during the interval. At least not in terms of using the bench. But we'll probably see Pablo Cardozo pushed further forward in this second half by Sydney Olympic given that they are trailing the match. Cardozo, there he is, spent a lot of time in midfield during that first half. Top goal scorer in the league. Probably needed more now at the sharp end. Olympic looking for inspiration and in particular an early goal just to settle their nerves. A few anxious players out there towards the end of that first half. A few refereeing decisions going against Sydney Olympic. A couple of cards as well flourished by the referee. Ante Juric and Milan Blagojevic both receiving cautions. So Olympic need to just settle a bit more and try and play their own game. Jamar there in the back of Marth gives away the free kick right under the nose of the referee as we speak. Carlton having... Three teenagers on the bench, Adam Pongo, Nick Tolios, and Tony Uliaris. So Eddie Krenchevich probably hoping that the players he has out there will be able to go on with the job. I just wonder whether those uh, players have that fitness. We've talked about it again at half time, but when you step up to National League from the Youth League, there's a hell of a difference. I think the pace of the game certainly uh, might tire a couple of those youngsters and and i say that and i also say at the same time that those youngsters have done a great job especially stojewski uh, keeping sakenis quiet thomas has found a way through to kalantis and kalantis responds that's just what the doctor ordered anastasiatis suggesting there was the use of the hand there but chris kalantis his second of the game and for the second time, he's drawn Olympic back on level terms. A great ball in by Thomas, playing in midfield now, in central midfield. The best efforts of Savinsky couldn't keep it out, and Kalantis with the right boot held his nerve. Was a good finish, wasn't it? When you're scoring goals, you need it. Did he get his hand to it? I'm not quite sure, but Kalantis into the side netting. That's where you need to put them nowadays. Goalkeepers are that big, that good. If you don't hit the side netting nowadays, you're not going to score. And Kalantis, with all that experience, did that for Olympic. Perfect timing by Chris Kalantis. Olympic on fire. Thomas Cardozo through against the goalkeeper. Cardozo 
Great save, Anastasiadis. Good pressure from Douglas as well. Carlton ripped the shreds all of a sudden. There was three on one. And Olympic really should have taken the lead here. It's coming thick and fast for Sydney Olympic. Yeah, I don't think Pablo Cardozo had any, much more steam in the engine. He'd run so far with that ball. Douglas was tracking him down. Two more steps and he would have got a tackle in. So he had to take the shot, but Dean Anastasiadis, good goalkeeping, swallowed up the angles, had nothing left for Pablo to hit. Well, exactly what Sydney Olympic were after. And John Sentis, the assistant coach, uh, you were desperately hoping for a goal early in the second half and you've got it. Yeah, we have for sure. But uh, we could have been in front. Pablo still hasn't broken uh, his drought, so to speak. Just a few uh, adjustments that we can see. Probably Cardozo spending more time in the forward line in the second half. Yeah, you've picked it right, Michael. Uh, we've pushed another one forward. We're playing with three up front. Uh, we need a win, uh, especially with knowing all the other results. I mean, we can hit for a spot here. How was the mood in the dressing room at halftime? A little bit anxious? A bit disappointed. I thought we uh, conceded a couple of cheap goals. Branko thought the same, and uh, he told them as much. But uh, they seemed to have picked it up straight away. Uh, what he said to them uh, and the three we're playing up front seems to have worked. And what about a few signs of frustration there from your players about those refereeing decisions towards the end of that first half? Uh, might have been a little bit of fr frustration, but uh, we're probably one-eyed, but uh, we thought it was going both ways. Uh, we, we saw it a bit closer from where you were, Michael, but uh, Ante shouldn't have reacted the way he did. Uh, either should Midland, but uh, he's very smart, Andrew Marth. And uh, he got away with it. Okay, good luck for the second half, John Sentis. Of course, anything less than three points here won't be what Olympic are after. Kalantz is caught offside there by the flag. Paul well, Wade, Chris Kalantz is in everything. Well, this is what they lacked in that first half, wasn't it? If anything, it was those runs from a, a sort of a midfield position. And Chris Kalantz is doing exactly what Jason Kalina has done on the several occasions that our cameras have been here at Belmore. And if he can continue to do that, I know he'll tire a little bit, but if he can continue to do that, Savinsky and Douglas are not the quickest, neither is Della Rocca. They just might be split wide open. Carlton, are they good enough to come back from that setback? They've already taken the league twice, the Blues, and both times seen it squandered. Carlton, of course, missing so many experienced players. Sydney Olympic, though, have virtually full deck to choose from. So Branko Cellino will be expecting more out of his team in the second half. Frank Frieda not altogether surprised that Pablo Cardozo has pushed up front. No, and it's, it's paid immediate dividends, obviously, with getting the goal and him almost scoring himself. And so Kenneth has got past Marth on the byline. Good cover provided in the middle for Carlton. Olympic have their tails up. Here's Cardozo weaving some magic. Is he trying to do too much? Cardozo still going. A miscued clearance there by Carlton. And that will be a corner kick. Anthopoulos a little bit disappointed with his contribution. Olympic trying to turn the screws. Anastasiadis already beaten twice this evening, both times by Kalantzis. Jamar with the in-swinger from the corner. The crowd trying to lift this Olympic team. In it comes from Jamar. Deep Urich is there. So too, though, is Marth with an important contribution. Kalantzis on the ball now. Looking for his hat-trick. Can't get past Thompson. Nice skills there by Archie Thompson. Did it with ease, really. And Thompson there. Wasn't expecting the return pass from Stojewski. Well, we talk about the importance of Cardozo going up front for Sydney Olympic, but in the reshuffle, Scott Thomas is also pushing to central midfield, and he's making his presence felt, isn't he? Yeah, we, know, we didn't see anything of him in that first 45 minutes. And I noticed who was chasing down that right-hand side with that last attack. It was Frank Urich. So maybe 
Branko Kalina has said, let's start making runs from midfield. Let's start exposing their, uh, their shortcomings at the back. See how slow they really are. Let's really test them. Short ball by Anastasiadis, Anthopoulos. Good awareness from him. Still going, Anthopoulos. Can't get past Jamar. <clears throat> Important tackle. Kalantis looks up, tries to find Tomei. Della Rocca was there for Carlton. He needed to be as well. Nice feel about this game now. Olympic trying to force the pace a little bit more than they did in that first half. Kalantis getting some room. Ball takes a deflection. Another corner to Sydney Olympic. Chris Kalantis is a hero of the Olympic fans and tonight he has delivered big time for them. Two goals from Palantis. Being Olympic, a real chance of going on and winning this match. Cardozo with the corner. Juric is there, but Marth once again doing a good job defensively. Big Andrew Marth has Cleared the danger on a few occasions now from these corners. Very hard player to beat in the air, Andrew Mark, as Anto Juric is discovering. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's official crowd attendance, 3,444. Another corner to be played in by Jamar. And it comes, deep ball once again. Savinsky bars the way. It's broken for Stojewski. Just Trikarico is forward for Carlton. And good work here by Thomas. And Cardozo there. Can't guess past his man. Scotty Thomas, a real terrier, bobbing up all over the park now for Sydney Olympic. And as the home team look to perhaps go into the lead for the first time in this game. Well, Carlton have given a good account of themselves so far in this match, but Fab in Cantalupo, the assistant coach, with so many uh, inexperienced players out there tonight, can you keep it up? Well, look, uh, Mike, uh, you know, it's, it's always got to be hard uh, playing with uh, some young boys uh, in the first 11. But look, we've been look, absolutely uh, ecstatic the way. Uh, presented themselves the first 45 minutes. I mean, uh, the goal that we scored in the first half, it was a Stevie Martin corner, uh, and then uh, an Ace Torjeski uh, cross to Alex Moreira. So, look, we've been happy with our performance in the first 45 minutes. And just a word on Martin, he has certainly been impressive in this first half. Oh, yes, he has. Look, uh, you know, he's got, you know, he's only 18, and uh, he plays like a 30-year-old sometimes, and uh, well, we're quite surprised the way he's progressed uh, the last three weeks. Uh, look, you know, these boys, are, uh, we've got to give them a chance. Uh, we know that the, our top six contention is out of, out of reach. So um, we, we're throwing these boys in and they're putting their hands up and that's all you can ask for. And uh, I guess you're also wanting uh, plenty from your experienced players for the last few rounds, including in this match, the likes of uh, Andrew Marth, Con Anthopoulos, Sean Douglas, Savinsky and oh, the rest. Oh, that's right. Look, uh, you know, those boys are going to be standing up and, and counter for... Uh, uh, to have uh, those young players playing in, that, in the first 11, you've got to have your Andrew Mouse and your Con Anthopoulos encouraging him and uh, pushing him along and making sure that they're, they're working hard for, for themselves and the, and the club. And finally, Fab, just how is the, the, uh, the team mentally after losing five games in a row? Oh, look, uh, Mike, it's not always uh, pretty to, to come here five zip. Uh, but look, we, we've had a uh, meeting during a week and uh, we've just set some goals uh, for the last three games. And we said, look, you know, regardless, uh, we, we've got to go out, go out with pride. Uh, we are still playing in the, in, the, in the competition, in the National League competition, and we've got to, we've got to get something out of the next three games, uh, whether, whether we win, whether we lose. But uh, the club's got to gain something for, uh, uh, like, a step ladder for next year's uh, uh, season. Thanks for talking to us, Fab. Good luck for the rest of this game and the rest of the season. Thank you very much. Marth on the ball for Carlton. Thompson looks for the switch, but he's given it away. A careless ball from Thompson. Cardozo is doing his best to stay on side. And in the end, it was the wrong option from Scotty Thomas. Cardozo was in good space there. 
Probably should have got the pass. Yeah, yeah, dead right, he should have got the pass, but everything's so beautiful in hindsight. Uh, Frank Farina, I think that for some reason, Carlton all of a sudden are giving the ball away so much they can't even get into uh, their front third. They seem to have slowed right down and uh, possibly that's the, the effect of the, the, the early goal in the second half there. But, um, yeah, look, I, I think as long as they can weather this storm for at least another five to ten minutes, uh, they should settle back down, or hopefully they will. Hopefully, of course, because Frank Farina desperately hoping Carlton get a win here. <laughs> Suits Marconi down to the ground. Go on, deny it, Frank. <laughs> oh, look, I haven't got a mean streak in me. <laughs> Marconi, Sydney Olympic and Adelaide City locked on 39 points as of this morning. You've just seen Adelaide City going down to the Adelaide Sharks in the local derby at Hindmarsh. A shock result for many. And Frank Farina looking for the Quinella with an Olympic loss here. But Olympic will have something to say about that over the next half an hour or so, having got themselves back on level terms once again. Olympic need... A third goal. Maybe that will break the back of this Carlton side. So Kenneth Kalantis, he's looking for a hat trick. He's also looking for a teammate in the middle, but he can't find him. Still going. Kalantis that hasn't been cleared. And again, Kalantis trying to find the player on that far side in Cardozo. 60 minutes gone. Two apiece here at Belmore. Plenty still to play for. Blagojevic. Cardozo dropping off to receive the ball. Doesn't have too many options in front of him. Goes square instead to Thomas now with Tomei down the line. Does he have the speed to get past Savinsky? No, he doesn't. Savinsky with a good tackle. Another corner for Sydney Olympic. They're getting plenty of corners, the home team. But the lights of Savinsky and Marth proving very formidable in the air for Sydney Olympic. They haven't got the contact they want from these corners. Jamar with another in-swinger, Dean Anastasiadis. Encouraging his team. of tall timber at the back post it comes short instead Kalantis is there just needed the contact there from Chris Kalantis he knows it as well so Kenneth was in the middle of, as well how close was this Kalantis jump got the touch and that could have been a hat trick so easily I think that's why Sir Kenneth stayed on his knees as long as he did if Chris Kalantis hadn't got that touch he was there unmarked we talk about Andrew Marth on your screen there, the number six, being so good in the air. And the last couple, uh, they seem to be left a little bit wanting. Sydney Olympic are starting to grow in confidence. Stojewski. Here's Tricarico. Danger all of a sudden for Olympic. Marrera's in the middle. Tricarico past his man. Out comes the goalkeeper, Bohutsas. Cleared off the line by Juric, and Bohutsas recovers well. Excellent play, that, by Ante Juric. Carlton, though, will be encouraged by that. Players putting their bodies on the line. Thompson now. Marrera comes back into an onside position. Well, Tricarico just exploded out of the blocks there for Carlton. But now there's a chance at the other end for Olympic. Unselfish there from Cardozo. And Eddie Krenchevich not happy with the space all of a sudden appearing at the back. Carlton coach for the first time in the game, showing a little bit of emotion. Carlton almost getting themselves back in front once again, and that is the danger for Sydney Olympic in their enthusiasm to take the lead. They can be caught on the counter. Yeah, and uh, who better to do it than Joe Tricarico? He's ably supported with a couple of youngsters in midfield for Carlton. So uh, and when you've got a clinical finisher like Moriera, you've got a complete picture, really. It's set up for a, a beautiful counter-attack, and they showed on that occasion that they're more than capable of it. And a change about to be made by Eddie Krenchevich. 
and it's going to be a debut for Adam Pongo, a young midfield player, prefers to play on the left side. Who's going to make the way? In fact, it's going to be Stojewski. So, a big moment for this young man, Adam Pongo, just 17 years of age. He gets to make his debut in the Ericsson Cup. I wonder if it'll be a debut to remember. As it goes Stojewski. Pongo in fact, looks as though he may go into defence, so there could be a, a few reshuffles here from Eddie Krenchevich. We saw him off the bench a moment or two ago, complaining to his defence. Maybe he wants to just tighten things up there at the back. Well, if, as they were saying at half-time, they want to get something out of the rest of this season, then a point would be something. It's something to build on. He's got, as we said, so many youngsters, so many teenagers, so many first-timers that you really, as he said in the media during the week, we need to find out those who want to play for this club and those that don't. And this is a great test for everybody. Very anxious look on the face of Branko Cellina. He will be frustrated. If Olympic can't get a win here. And Marrera will be booked here for not retreating the required distance here. Alex Morera. So the first Carlton player to go into the notebook. He's already scored once tonight, Morera. Twelve goals so far this season for the Brazilian. Really, that's a yellow card that he won't be too happy with. Neither will his coach. Blagojevic, Palancis. Just sticking a boot there, really, Palancis. Andrew Marth. Using his imposing presence there to keep Juric away from the ball, but they have it back. Olympic. And it almost found its way through to Tomei in the middle. Cardozo looked up, knew exactly what was on. But Dean Anastasiadis, well placed in that Carlton goal. Palance is starting to show a few signs of fatigue now. Probably a heavy pitch underneath for these players. And Palantis certainly has been working hard for his team. Durakovic with the header. Over the top of Marrera. Well, Frank Green, a lot of people suggesting uh, Sydney Olympic were going to be missing Brett Emerton and Jason Chalina, fine players that they are, but Chris Galantis, he gets his chance really with those two absent. And I'd suggest he's not a bad replacement. Well, he's, he's been absolutely sensational tonight, Mike. Uh, he's been in everything, scored both goals, and uh, is still looking very dangerous. And uh, yes, uh, <laughs> very able replacement. Here comes Marrera. He stayed on side. Marrera inside Bailey very comfortably indeed but the cover was there from Sakenis. Sakenis stays down behind play he's taken a knock the Sydney Olympic captain and in the end Martin slides in Sakenis will need some treatment Jamar. Kenneth gets gingerly to his feet behind the plate. And Urich finally 
realises that Sakenis is in some pain here. Ladies and gentlemen, spectators are right the knee, Peter Sakenis. All spectators are requested to and break the ground as soon as possible after the conclusion of the match. Having a few complaints to the and referee, the it was Herrera who created the problem a minute or so ago for Peter Tsikenis as he slid in to make the tackle. And that right knee is giving him some pain now, probably stiffening up as we speak. Let's hope it's nothing serious for to Kenneth. It's probably the last thing Branko Chalina wanted. It's interesting to note that Carlton have conceded 2.23 goals per game in their last 13 games, Frank. 29 goals in 13 games. I'm sure Sydney Olympic could be very happy with 2.23 goals tonight. It'd be enough, wouldn't it? Yep. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a problem for them. They've been conceding a lot of goals. As you said earlier, they've, they've scored a lot of goals this season, but it becomes a worry when you when you are conceding so many and uh, we had a patch where we were pretty much doing the same thing and it's not real pleasant. So what do you do? Do you get more and more bodies behind the ball and defending numbers and hope that uh, one of them doesn't drop to a striker with a blue shirt on? Uh, I screamed a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> that didn't seem to work either, but no. I think we, we just concentrated on, on making sure we didn't give possession away in, in, in dangerous areas and that's what, where we were getting punished. And, Sometimes that comes down to not such... Cardozo. And Pablo Cardozo letting rip there for Sydney Olympic. They backed off him. Carlton. The shot was always going to go over the top. Yeah, as I say, it was, it was most probably... It doesn't come down to just necessarily bad defence. It can, can be bad attacking, which costs you goals sometimes as well. And, uh, you know, I think once you fix that up, sometimes you'll find your defensive problems will disappear as well yeah 20 minutes left for sydney olympic to get the three points they desperately want they're going to have to work for them though Carlton showing a few signs in the last couple of minutes that they may have weathered a little bit of a storm there from sydney olympics so kennis thankfully is up and about again he seems to be okay Marth under pressure from Tekenis and Cardozo. Finally, he's given it away, but is that going to be a Sydney Olympic throw? No. The referee overrules his assistant. Mark Shield, a referee of strong opinion. He's not going to be swayed by anyone. The last 15 minutes are the key for Sydney Olympic. We've said it before, they've scored a league-high 14 goals in the last 15 minutes. Branko Kalina prides himself on the fact that his team keeps more possession than any other. And that's why they get so much of the ball in the front third, because they don't give it away. 14 goals is uh, in the last 15 minutes. Frank, you'd be happy with that? I would be extremely happy <laughs> with that, Paul. <laughs> But I think of late, we've seen a lot of games which have been decided in the last couple of minutes. A um, little distraction, but yeah, it, there are a lot of teams who, who are being able to score in the last or the latter stages of games, which is, uh, which is promising and uh, it's also a bit, uh, a bit bad as well for the teams who are conceding. Frank, some people might suggest that's full-time football and the fitness you get from it. Marconi considering going full-time next year. Do you... Oh, honestly, my, I think it's a load of garbage, to be honest. People are talking about oh, all, all the teams that are full-time have got the, the fittest players. Uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, uh, I would put it to anyone that we, we are one of the fittest sides in the league and, you know, but in saying that we still train six sessions a, a week. So, I don't know. I think it depends on the quality of work you do during the week, which determines whether your players are fit or not. Well, there's a surprise. Pablo Cardozo is replaced by... Nicky Carl and Nicky Carl did the job last week off the bench with a goal against the Perth Glory. But still a surprise, the top goal scorer in the league, given an early mark by his coach Branko Cellina. Just over 15 minutes left. Tomate. And 
Durakovic did his best to keep that ball under control, but even Mehmet Durakovic was unable to work wonders there. A little bit of surprise to see Cardozo go off. Paul yeah, Lake. very much so. I mean, Branko never stops thinking while he's on the touchline. I'm sure you're the same, Frank. You're working out reasons why you've got the formation you've got. How are you going to change it? I mean, when you've got a stalemate like this, you've maybe got to pull something out of the bag to uh, to get a result. Hobo's had a quiet game as well, I think, by, by his high standards. And uh, Chris Colances is obviously on fire. And when you're searching for something, you, you know, top goal scorer or not, I think he's had a quiet night. And most probably it, it was the right decision from Branko. So Nicky Carl, a young player with plenty of talent. Gets just over 15 minutes to make an impression here. He's on his way back from a knee injury. Nick Carl. That probably cost him a place in the World Youth Championship squad. Of course, the young Socceroos making their debut in Nigeria in just a few hours against Saudi Arabia. A lot of eyes on the young Socceroo performance over there at the World Youth Championships. Both of these clubs have a couple of representatives Sydney Olympic with Chilina, Jason Chilina that is and Brett Emerton, Carlton with Marco Bresciano and Simon Colosimo Sean Douglas looking very weary indeed at the moment played forward by Carlton. Martin it was looking for Tricarico, but the cover was there momentarily at least for Olympic and there's a difficult bounce almost for George Bohutas. The crowd urging Olympic to get a move on here. Very hard to please these Sydney Olympic fans. You don't just have to win every game, you have to win it by about five or six nil, don't you? <laughs> you certainly do. Whether it's South Melbourne or Sydney Olympic, they demand the very best. They pay top dollar, they want top entertainment. Morera, great run here from Morera. But Peter Tsikinas this time gets a nice clean tackle in. Kalantis, can he get a third? Down he goes. Can he get a decision from the referee? <laughs> Struggling for that as well. He's irrepressible, Chris Kalantis. He's never going to change. It's too late, in fact, for him to change, really. He's a very difficult player. Some might suggest to handle for coaches, but he gives 100% when he's in the mood. He's matured too. After so long overseas, Chris Galantis, very much a settled man on and off the park these days. Still inclined, though, to give the referee the benefit of his opinion on a few occasions. Tonight has been his night, no doubt about that at all. There he is, in fact, winning a free kick as we speak. De La Roca a fractionally late. Carl gets the return from Kalantis. Carl has beaten his man there. Was that obstruction? The referee says no. Thomas doing equally well. The left foot shot coming off a teammate in Urich. Scotty Thomas, nice movement there. Nice use of the body as well. The way that he just made himself some room there. Committed the defender. Nice skill. And maybe they came off Nick Carl, in fact. Either way, it's going to be a Carlton goal kick. I wonder what the men in the blue shirt are thinking, Frank. They've, they need the three points. It would be nice if they got them. But if they got one point as well, considering what's happened this weekend so far, I mean, you're level with them on 39 points and, you, uh, and you, you've had your game already. Adelaide City lost and they're level on 39 points. One point would put you inside that top six by two instead of one. I'm just wondering if they'd be tempted not to lose it rather than try and go out and win it. And if you consider their next, or their run-in to the finals, it's 
the Knights away, Wollongong at home, and Adelaide City, that final game, that could be the crunch game away. So one point could be the difference. One point could be the difference. Uh, you know, I, I don't think they'll... They, would, they wouldn't be overly upset with just getting one point tonight, but, uh, yeah, it's a hard one. I don't think they're going to try and sit back or whatever. They'll, they'll des definitely try and win the game, and uh, rightly so. You know, to get the three points, I think, is the, the overriding priority at the moment. Ah, Sydney left it good enough to do that. That is the question. They have just over ten minutes to prove the point. And no one's left the ground as yet. These Olympic fans still harbouring some hope that there'll be a late goal from the home team to decide the contest. Here comes Blagojevic. Showed too much of the ball though to Sean Douglas who made a well-timed interception. Olympic though have it back through to Kenis. Now with Juric. Juric and Durakovic will probably start seeing a bit more of them coming forward but they've Made the error there. Can Carlton capitalise? Martha stayed forward. The flag is down. He is onside, Andrew Marth. Inside comes Alex Moreira and Scotty Bailey. He had the presence of mind to come off his man and make the challenge. It's one of those difficult decisions a defender has to make. Scotty Bailey made the, the right decision here. Yeah, he certainly did, but I think it was him who was actually keeping them all onside, so he probably felt a little bit responsible there didn't really know where the Carlton player was behind him. Could only see what was in front. It was Tricarico behind him. So you're right. Made the right decision in the end. Long throw comes in. Easily dealt with by Hussain Jamar. Thompson with a cross. Bahutsis right behind the ball. Ten minutes left, and still it's all tied up here. As Carl breaks down that left side, look who stayed forward. Mehmet Durakovic now with Thomas. In it comes, takes a deflection, great chance here. And Olympic take the lead. And it's the same Jamar, is it, on that far side. In fact, it's the substitute, Nicky Carl. Nicky Carl the job super sub for the second week in a row perfect timing from Nick Carl Carlton made a mess of the clearance Carl was there it fell nicely to his favorite left foot no chance the goalkeeper and Olympic well are they on their way to victory uh, you said Scotty Thomas was taking more of an active role in it well you can't get more active than that can you supplying the chance for Nick Carl to finish off. But again, Mehmet Jurakovic playing a huge part as well. How often has he done it for South Melbourne and the Socceroos in the past? And he's done it for Sydney Olympic. Just takes a, a slight chance, leaves himself exposed at the back. And it pays dividends. And now you'll see him, the last man in defence, not going to give anything away. He will not leave that defensive role. There he is, five yards behind everybody else, the last blue shirt. Blagojevic, what a contribution from the substitute, Nick Carl. Well, if there were some question marks about Franco Cellina's substitution, bringing off his top goal scorer, Pablo Cardozo, they have been answered. They are the moments a coach enjoys, aren't they, Frank Farina? <laughs> Everybody's sitting in the grandstand being an expert, and you've just shut them all up. Definitely. I think it, I think it was a, a pretty inspired move by Branco, and, and Nick Carl's come on, and uh, he's done the business again. Good idea, Frank Farina, take Chris Kalansis off, fresh legs in midfield, maybe he was running out of steam. Well, I think that uh, Branko is pretty confident with it, well, about 10 minutes to go, that uh, leading 3-2, uh, he's going to maybe maybe sit back and, and just see if Carlton are going to push forward. But, uh, yeah, I think it was a good move. Chris had a great game. Kalansis certainly getting plenty of applause from the crowd here with his two-goal performance. Tomei sliding and catching his man, that's a free kick. It was Adam Pongo who was on the end of a very strong Tomei challenge. Uh, you just have a look at the eyes now in this Sydney Olympic team. They are determined not to let this one slip. 
twice they have had to come from behind in this match and now finally they've hit the front martin with the free kick out comes Bohutsos. no challenge on the goalkeeper Toma. Toma with a very audacious attempt from probably 40 metres. Tried to chip the goalkeeper. Didn't get the contact. Jamar pumps it forward. Hussein Jamar. What a valuable win this will be for Sydney Olympic if they can hold on to it. Adelaide City losing the derby against the Sharks. And in fact, the win here would put Olympic into fourth place on the ladder. Blagojevic, down he goes. No reaction from the referee. The Sydney Olympic players just buzzing now. They're surrounding the ball this is where the experience comes into play the it's likes of Blagojevic, Thomas, Tukenis they're not going to take too many risks here comes the overlap from Juric yeah, this is where you take a couple of touches and you pass it and you move the defence around and you move them again because players are starting to get tired now and people like Blagojevic who can keep possession they're the ones who sit on the ball and don't give it back to Carlton Well, Olympic have worked themselves into that far corner. That's exactly where they want to be. Now there's some noise from the grandstand. Maybe there's a fourth for Olympic. Thomas is the target. Hasn't been cleared. Look who's there again. Durakovic, he'd love to have scored there, man, but Durakovic, he was licking his lips as that ball came across to him. But sadly for Durakovic, he totally sliced the shot. Anthopoulos. Carlton wondering if they can get out of this. Chikariko, Marth, away by Durakovic, Tomei should get there for Sydney Olympic, Della Rocca looks to be struggling, some sort of limp, David Della Rocca, maybe Olympic can exploit that situation, nice skills from Thompson, down he goes, gets the free kick, a little bit of a soft decision that one I'd have to say from Mark Shield, and there's a card as well, For young Peter Zorbus. He was the player who committed the free kick. Everyone's gone forward for Carlton. The target was Marth. Jamar. Over the touchline from him. Carlton, maybe they've got some energy left for the equaliser. Olympic. Leaving just one player up front now. As they look to secure this result. Thomas putting pressure. Kariko. Pongo under pressure as well. And Kukariko has followed through on Blagojevic right under the nose of Mark Shield. And the referee wants to have a word, does he? In fact, no, there's going to be another change. 
Take the change from both coaches Mark, for the last few Mark, minutes. Mark. Bailey down the line. Savisky's there. Ball's over the line. Now they'll make their change. And off will come Norman Tomei for Olympic. Mark Brennan with just a few minutes to steady things in midfield for Sydney Olympic. And for Carlton, off will come Tricara Cohen on the young striker Tony Uliaris. So all three substitutes for Sydney Olympic getting their opportunity in this match. Franco Cellini looking to secure this result with some fresh legs in the dying stages. Nicky Carl has proved to be an inspired change for number 19 for Sydney Olympic. His goal is now what separates these two teams. Blagojevic steams onto it. The shot in fact takes a deflection off his teammate. Here's Marth. Carlton looking to break quickly. Marrera is the target. Juric should get there first. He does so. Comes in the middle. Bahutsas. And George Bahutsas, a very safe pair of hands. He turned 30 yesterday, George Bahutsas, and nothing would make him happier than a win tonight for Sydney Olympic. Martin with the long throw. Flicked on there, away by Durakovic. Put back in by Savinsky. And away comes Peter Zorbis. And to Kenneth and Bailey almost collide in their enthusiasm to get to that ball. Free kick to Carlton. Inside their own half, they'll just pump it forward now. Anthopoulos will look for the likes of Savinsky and Marth. There's a flick on indeed from big Andrew Marth, but no one following through for the Carlton team. We're into stoppages here at Belmore Oval. Sydney Olympic clinging on. Anthopoulos pumps it forward once again. The whistle's starting to come from the crowd here. A minute now added on by Mark Shield. They just want the whistle to go, the Sydney Olympic fans. going to be a free kick to Carlton. I'll set it up. Young Adam Pongo. I'll just pump it into the box. In it comes. White shirts are there, but no one on the end of it in the end. A good knockdown. But George Mahutis was quickly off his line, and there is the whistle. Celebration time for Sydney Olympic. That's the result they wanted, and they showed great character as well. He's the hero of the night, Nicky Carl, the super sub for the second week in a row. Sydney Olympic being forced to come from behind twice in this match. Great character shown by the home team. Carlton, though, doing their job under trying circumstances. The Carlton side missing so many key players tonight. But they took the lead early through David Savinsky. The equaliser came from Kalantis. There was another goal from Herrera before half-time, but Sydney Olympic came from behind in the second half. Kalantis with a second, and finally, Nicky Carl with what proved to be the winner. The final score here at Belmore Oval, Sydney Olympic 3, Carlton 2.